Hi everybody, it's Red Hill Eagle, and this is episode 3 of the World of Sport Wrestling TEW 2020 save. And let's just get straight into it, shall we? With Unleashed. So here we are, and we open up with Cyanide taking on Absolute Andy. Uh, 36, um, kind, of, kind of not bad. Cyanide is unimportant, and Absolute Andy is recognisable. Again, when I planned out this save, I was kind of hoping they'd be around the... The other way it's difficult sometimes when you're playing with such small companies with um you know small popularity um but there we go it's kind of uh, it's kind of what it is uh, cyanide was off his game cyanide's debut um but he got the win and uh he got it in six minutes 25 by pinfall we had him dominate because we want cyanide to be kind of a bit of a bit of a monster and um, he's got the gimmick there of um well he's got a stalker gimmick um that doesn't come to fruition just yet um you know we've got a few other a few other things going on at the moment but um sooner or later you will kind of well let's just wait and see shall we and then jackie polo interviews chris renfrew this is just a self promo really for renfrew uh, someone we want to push up the card uh, he's another one who's down as unimportant which was um annoyed's the wrong word but a little bit frustrated with i thought he would have been a slightly higher but um it is what it is, but we're going to do what we can to get him up the card. I've always sort of liked him. I've always used him in my UK promotion saves. So there we have it. That's his interview. And it's a 25, which, um, well, it's not great. Uh, Yeston Reese then challenges Shah Samuels to a match. If you remember, there's a bit of bad blood between the two. So um, he makes the challenge. He wants to get his revenge on... Shah Samuels, um, and this is a rating of 35. Lionheart then takes on Jack Jester, and it's Jack Jester that gets the win in 10 minutes 30 via a pinfall with a running knee. A rating of 47, much better there. Um, and this is, uh, this is the match where um, Greg Burridge um, decides to come out and watch. Um, you remember... Uh, he has done this in the past, where he's come out and just sat down and watched a match. So again, he comes down the ring, um, grabs a seat or a chair, unfolds it, sits down, arms folded, got popcorn and a drink, and he just watches the match. So Lionheart and Jack Jester at first are a bit kind of, you know, what's this all about? Who's, who's he got beef with? But nope, he just sits down, watches the match, gets a bit excited when there's some action. You know, Jack Jester's uh, a bit of a bit of a kind of spooky character i wouldn't quite go as far as to say dead man but he's um he's that kind of mysterious kind of uh vibe um so he's kind of nonplussed about it all uh but but you know greg burridge is kind of like you know he doesn't quite know what to make of jack jester but he's he's kind of he's marking out a little bit um and lionheart's putting on a good display as well um and he actually got the better, the better rate in here 46 so yeah greg burridge is like wow did you see that move look at lionheart wow look at him go you know, that Jack Chester, he's a bit of a bit of an oddball, isn't he? He's talking to the crowd. He's talking to the fans. And he's you know, trying to interact with them and, 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 and get them going. But yeah, he, he seems to be enjoying it more than the people who have paid. 47, though. Quite pleased with that one. Uh, we then have uh, the on the news desk, um, we have Messiah Hallberg, who introduces us to James Mason, who just cuts herself promo. Nothing more than this, but to uh, just uh, give Mason a little bit more... Um, exposure on TV. He's one of the guys who is down as upper mid card. He's got the family man kind of gimmick, so he's like a uh, kind of uh, clean cut, maybe not fan favorite in sort of the Rocks League, but he's kind of uh, people like him and they know what it, what to what they're going to get from him. And you know, he's he's he doesn't annoy anybody. He just tries to get on with business. So um, yeah, give him a bit of exposure. A rating of thirty. Again. We're a very small company, so we can't really expect to get too much more. But 30 is okay. The Rage then takes on Greg Burridge. So Greg Burridge gets to uh, possibly look at uh, look at copying some of what he's just seen. And uh, he tries a couple of little spots that he saw in the previous match. Um, rating of 41 is very good. Um, although it says a poor match, but I think that's probably one of our better efforts. But it's the Rage that gets the victory in 10 minutes 40 um, by a pinfall with the moonsault. Doug Williams then goes to Fred Payne in his office and he asks for a title match. 
against our champion, Boris Fedorov. And he thinks about it. Payne thinks about it. He says, well, you know, we've got no other title match books yet for the um, Unleashed special coming up. So, um, yeah. Granted, you've got a title match. Good luck. Uh, so Doug Williams is um, obviously thrilled at that. He uh, vowed to take the title away from Fedorov after he uh, had to get help from his manager to win the title last week or retain the title last week. And um, rating of 37, so again, not great. Um, we may need to look at the, um, what they called road agent situation. But again, we're a small company. We, To be honest, there probably wasn't much better out there, which is why I, I had to make that hiring. But 37 here, and we have a title match booked for the Unleashed special. BT Gun then takes on Nick Aldis, and Nick Aldis is a is a guy who says he wants to put the rest of the roster to shame. He wants to show everyone how it's done, and uh, he got a uh, performance rating of sixty here, which is possibly the best we've seen. I don't usually take too much in when I'm looking at these. I normally do just look at the segment rating, but I think that's probably one of the best we've had. Um, and he got the win in six minutes fifty via a pinfall with a tormentum. Sorry, I'm a little bit far away from my laptop. Tormentum. Okay, so yeah, 40, 43. Good. Nice little score there. We then have a Rampage Brown self-promo. Nothing to say here, particularly. Um, it's just a just a promo, a cutaway Rampage Brown. Getting some exposure on TV. You know, at the moment, we're just trying to get a lot of our guys over. We're trying to get a lot of the, the top guys are involved in a lot of storylines. The other guys not so much. Um, so we, you know, but we want to sort of keep a lot of our guys relevant at the moment until we kind of uh, expand, make a few more bigger storylines. But thirty-four, yeah, probably slightly better than average what we can expect at the moment. So yeah, not too bad at all. Sticks then takes on Andy Simmons, and uh, didn't have much heat, and it says terrible wrestling. Although again, thirty-four probably maybe average. Of what we can expect, but Andy Simmons got the victory in 11 minutes 46 by count out. 34, yeah, not too shabby. Katie Lease and Boris Fedorov are then in there in the back somewhere. Um, they you know they weren't featured tonight at all, but they're there as uh, most of the roster are training or whatever. And Lees is absolutely furious that Williams has given his title match, and uh, you know, she wants uh, something done about it. Um, Boris doesn't say anything. He's, uh, his English is very limited, but uh, you know, Lee's is a little bit upset, um, and uh, you know, she's gonna she's gonna have a, a little chat with uh, with the CEO next week with regards to the booking of that match. A rating of forty. Uh, yep, again, pretty good. Then we have John Hennigan and Zach Saber Jr., and they are cutting promos for their rematch, their re-rematch of the uh, contract match that they've been fighting for. So far, both matches have been draws. They've hit the time limit of 20 minutes, and they just keep getting a rematch. Um, at the moment, these guys aren't getting paid. <laughs> They're not getting paid until such a time as one of them gets a contract. You know, If they are getting anything, it, it's, it's pretty minimal. So you know, both guys are desperate to kind of either get this one out of the way or, or, or move on and just maybe find another company. But um, this is a promo. Uh, obviously, both guys think they're going to win it. Rating of 63. Very pleased with that. And would you believe it? It's another draw. They have reached the time limit again. This match was just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And just they just can't seem to... They can't split themselves. You just cannot... They can't get a winner. Um... So, do we go again? The current policy, as it seems, is to just keep having a rematch. I mean, is there going to be a time where they're just going to say, look, we're just going to give you both contracts? Or are they just going to say, look, sorry guys, this has gone on far enough. It's probably best for both parties if you went a different direction. We'll see. I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be an announcement soon. But a rating of 63... Very good. Uh, yep, I'm pretty pleased with that one. 
both guys got a 61 in the ring. Um, so we're just going to have to find out next week, probably, what is going to happen with these two guys. So to finish up, 54, um, that's got to be our high score, isn't it? That's got to be our high score, and I, by, by a long way, probably. I, my memory is awful, and I should probably check these things before making these videos, but I think that's pretty good. One thing I wanted to point out as well, which I forgot to point out during the match, because it got such a good rating, I think, the Rage and Greg Burridge are both unimportant. That may have come up in the notes down below. You may have seen it, um, that both guys were... Uh, sorry, uh, the fans may have been disappointed in seeing a match between two guys who they're not interested in, or I can't remember how, exactly how it's worded. But again, when I came to plan this save... I was kind of looking, I thought they would both at least be recognisable, if not well known. Um, so to find them both as unimportant was a bit disappointing. I want to get them both over. Uh, the Rage is, you know, very much another sort of spooky character that I want to kind of give the Undertaker sort of vibe. Um, and Greg Burridge, I think, is just a guy that, I mean, you probably noticed, <laughs> I keep mentioning him, you know, he's he's someone that we're trying to get over a little bit. Um Certainly his character, which obviously appears to be... He's a fan, isn't he? He's a fan. He loves it. Um, you know, and I was about to say something that I shouldn't then. Um, I'll try and keep things uh, close to my chest at the moment. But, um, yeah, so very pleased that that got a 41. So overall, 54. Um, wow, that, that's good. Um, I just want to say that um, although these videos are going out on a brand new YouTube channel. I do have other videos on another channel. The reason I swapped my YouTube channel was because I didn't want Red Hill Eagle to appear on my main email address. You know, I started using my email for proper adult things and I don't want people seeing Red Hill Eagle and I think that's quite fair. If anyone knows how I can kind of get my subscribers and my viewers and my videos from that account onto this account. But that, that's probably fairly easy, actually. But I, I guess what I'm asking is, am I able to change the name of my YouTube channel but keep the email address as something sensible? <laughs> um, I don't know. If anyone out there has got some advice, um, that'd be quite helpful. But if you, if you like this one, please like it. Please subscribe. And it's two weeks away until the... Uh, Unleashed special, which uh, the, you know the card is building up nicely. So, yeah, we'll um, we'll see what happens. And next week, of course, I'm sure World of Sport are gonna they're gonna have to make a decision over John Hennigan and Zack Saber. So, let's wait and see. Bye for now, guys. Take care.